What happens when your neighbor comes to your doorstep and says that she is selling Girl Scout cookies, but you have no cash? Well, you ask if she uses Venmo or a debit card, but she says no. How do you pay now? Well, you can pay with a check. Today, I will be talking about why knowing how to write a check is beneficial to you and society, along with how you can get checks, and finally, the steps to write a check correctly. Using a check is beneficial because there are no convenience fees. According to PaymentDepot.com, um, credit card processing ranges from 1.5% to 2.9% for swiped debit cards and another 3.5% for keyed in transactions. That's actually money that merchants can give back to you. Another benefit is that using a check is proof of payment. So when you use a check at a store, you can prove to the person that you paid for that specific transaction. And lastly, using a check is a safe way to spend money. Let's say you have a $100 bill and you drop it on the ground and someone picks it up. It'll be hard for you to prove that that is your money. But if you drop one of your checks and someone tries to cash it, they won't be able to because they need your signature and a proof of your ID. Also, according to PaymentDepot.com, 97% of small businesses still rely and use paper checks. Now, how do you get checks? Well, first you will need to go to your local bank and open a checking account. Then you can order, well after you order your, after you open your checking account, you can order checks to be mailed and printed to you. Just remember that when your checks get low, you should reorder some from either your bank and your, or a third party so that you always have enough to use. Um, also, you will need a check to write a check and a pen, preferably blue or black ink. Now stepping in to the checks on how to actually write one, step one is to date the check. You will find the spot to date the check on the right hand corner and you should date it as a month, date, and year format. This is important so the bank knows when you first wrote it and how long someone has had the check. Moving along to step two, it will be to address the check. You will find the line called pay to the order of, and that is who you will write the specific check to. For example, I wrote Mir Mir Salon, and for if I was getting a haircut, and that's where I would write it. Step three is the amount of the check. Um, you will write this in both number format and word format. First, write it in word format, and you should write it in dollars and cents. And you should write cents always over 100 just to be on the safe side. After you do step three, you can move on to step four, which is the amount in word format. For example, I wrote $50 over 100 cents in words. Next, step five is optional, but you can choose to write a memo. You will find this line on the bottom left hand corner. And for example, I wrote haircut because I was going to a salon. And this is just to ensure and to remember what you use the check for. And then lastly, step six is to sign the check. You should use your signature when signing the check just to make sure because if you don't sign it, then you cannot use, you cannot cash the check. So now that you know how to write a check, you can see that it is pretty easy to do. We also talked about how to get checks and what you need to write with how to write one. And finally, why checks are so beneficial to you and society. Even if you thought you never needed to write a check, now you know how and you have another way to pay your neighbor for those delicious Girl Scout cookies. Thank you. Yeah.